There are currently 2.3 million incarcerated people in the United States, the highest rate in the world, and many of those prisoners are married. While some of those serving time were already hitched, others have met and married while spouses, while one of them was in prison. Journalist Elizabeth Greenwood spent five years following couples who met during incarceration to understand how these relationships work. She is the author of the new book, Love Lockdown, Dating, Sex, and Marriage in America's Prisons, and she joins us now. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being here. So let's start with, the uh, from the outside looking in, the idea of a prison marriage, it might seem unusual, kind mm -hmm. of pick your adjective to describe mm -hmm. it. How often do these kinds of relationships start? They start, rel you know, more often than you would imagine. And they often start because the person on the outside will say, you know, I wasn't really looking for anything. I wasn't actually trying to get involved with someone in prison, but I was volunteering through church ministry. I was teaching a class. I wanted to send a note to an incarcerated person over the holidays as a good deed. And, you know, cut to six months, a year, 18 months later, and they're walking down the aisle. And what do they often get? Let's start, for example, with the person who's, uh, uh, on the outside, what do they get? What kind of comfort, consolation from uh, being married to a prisoner? There's something about the container of prison where so much of the outside world is really shut off in a way that we don't experience in the free world. There's no looking at your phone, you know, while you're at dinner. There's no Netflix and chill. So it creates this very intimate, emotionally vulnerable space. A lot of these relationships take place in the form of letter writing mm. and phone calls. So it's, you know, when you cut out that kind of physical um, aspect and a lot of of the distractions of daily life, there is a very deep connection that people forge in these relationships. And how about for the prisoner? What are they getting out of this? Well, I think for many prisoners, the people I interviewed, um, they said that it was a chance for them to connect with their humanity, to feel, you know, human and that love and connection and to experience a kind of softness that by nature of being in prison, you cannot experience. And, and you mentioned the word intimacy. And, you know, many people, I think, think about that in, in physical terms. What right. kind of privacy uh, do they get as, as husband and wife during these visits? Great question. I think that there is a real misconception about about the availability of conjugal visits in this country. Conjugal visits is actually a bit of a misnomer. These are really family visits um, for immediate family, parents, children, sisters, brothers. Those types of semi-private visits exist in only four states and they do not exist in every facility in those states. So the possibility of getting to spend real alone time with your spouse in one of these marriages is very slim. So people come up with incredibly creative ways to create that intimacy. You know, if you are lucky enough to have in-person visits resumed, you know, because of COVID, a lot of them were shut down for the greater portion of a year. Um, simple gestures like hand holding, that hug. I heard so many prison wives say, I can't wait till my visit this Saturday so I can get my hug. Um, there's also some very, you know, um, creative, uh, descriptive letter writing that goes on, shall sure. we say, <laughs> to forge that kind of intimacy as well. I would imagine that sometimes people could be concerned that this is one-sided, right? That mm -hmm. that the prisoner really stands to, to benefit. Did you hear it all from some of the, the wives that there was that concern at least going into it? I think there was, but again, you know, you don't just stumble into a prison relationship. There are so many obstacles and red tape in your way, you know, even just to go into a visit, there's an incredibly detailed protocol at every visit for what you have to do. So at every turn, you kind of have to decide and be very deliberate. Is this really what I want? Is this fulfilling for me? And when it stops being a lot of people exit and when, you know, for most people, it is good enough and is strong enough relationships to stay. It seems like quite often the inmates are men and the people who marry them on the outside are, are women. In those scenarios, did you find a common um, scenario or type of personality in the females who were attracted to, to marrying a prisoner? It's a great question. You know, every time I kind of thought I had an answer to that, I would meet someone who would turn it on its head completely. Mm. I do think that one um, thing I saw time and again was that 
many people who pursued these kinds of relationships did not have any um, prior experience in the criminal justice system, had not had an incarcerated parent or loved one. So this world was really new to them in a lot of ways. That wasn't always the case, but I did see that quite often. Um, I do think that many people who enter these kinds of relationships are um, perhaps are older, have had multiple had marriages before. Um, so this is, you know, they've kind of been around the block and this is something new. It offers them something novel. And, and you've said that there's a lot that all of us could, could learn from these prison mar marriages. What would those things be? Certainly. I think the biggest thing I came to learn after observing five couples over the course of five years and everything um, they had to go through, you know, holidays that don't look the same, um, you know, just lots of time apart is just what a privilege it is to really get to spend quality time with the people we love. I think we all experienced that a little bit going through COVID and, you know, these daily intimacies are just so important and so vital. I think another thing I observed too is this kind of creativity and innovation that prison couples bring to their relationships. Um, you know, whether that's in the form of being on a phone call with their husband in prison and going for a walk and describing everything they see. They just bring a lot of vivacity and novelty and creativity to their relationships, which I found really inspiring. I can imagine, and that we all don't want to take that for granted That's as right. much as we did when we can have that that one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, in-person contact. Elizabeth, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming on the show. Elizabeth Greenwood, author of Love Lockdown, Dating, Sex, and Marriage in America's Prisons, which is out now available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.